Chris Manaman, and I've been coordinating GLE One London's contribution to the night's event. The aim of the event was to bring together some of South London's best young business talent and to really show the value in networking and collaboration. I'm happy to say that GLE One London has been helping to nurture a lot of London's business talent through our Business London programme. Tonight's collaboration between GLE One London, Better Bankside and London Bridge Bid is really just the beginning and I hope you'll stay tuned to the GLE website in order to see what's coming up in the near future. So for now, please enjoy the presentation. Thank you. My name is Peter Williams, I'm Chief Executive of Better Bankside Business Improvement District. You're very welcome to, to Bankside and to Glaziers Hall. Uh, I always think this is such a great venue to start the night for this wonderful views. And what a great turnout. It's great to see so many, so many new and uh, some familiar faces as well. Uh, the first time I was in this venue, I remember it was about launching the Business Improvement District in Bankside. And um, one of the things that emerged from the room was um, uh, a comment that stuck with me. Are you trying to create a business village in Bankside? And I thought, that's a nice image. And I thought it was very appropriate that we were back doing an enterprise in, in Glaziers Hall. Uh, another first, just to mention, is that this is the first time that uh, Better Bankside has teamed up with um, uh, GLE One London and with London Bridge Business Improvement District. And if this is a, a kind of a result of our collaboration, long may it last. Uh, one of the things that we realized was that we'd probably be able to put a, a better program on between us than we could as individual parts. So it's great to see so many people. And uh, I'd like to uh, thank uh, Nadia and um, uh, Helen from London Bridge Bids and their colleagues, of course, and Liam and Colm from uh, GLE One London as well as Giles from Better Bankside, who put so much hard work to get the, the event organized to this stage. Um, I'm going to introduce now uh, Heather, who is uh, our very, very special guest tonight. Um, I'm intrigued to find out what the magic of networking. She said some rather ominous things in her introduction. She's certainly bouncing and very much ready to go. So I'm really very much looking forward to uh, um, sharing what Heather's got to say. Uh, founder and CEO of the magic of networking. No formal training, just a natural talent, obviously. Um, put together the principles of strategic networking skills and techniques and supply, uh, sorry, applied those successfully to her previous business. And through that, through those means, those means um, have now become the end. And she now delivers this training course, and um, it's an unique blend of consultancy and coaching services that she undertakes. And she was telling us just prior to the commencement how, how busy she is and how many times she kind of does this. And, but I could tell from a short kind of meeting with her, she's going to bring a, a freshness to, to the topic tonight. Heather, over to you. Thanks ever so much indeed, and thanks ever so much for inviting me to come along tonight as well. What's really interesting, uh, for those of you who do presentations, so one of the first things that happens is you notice an absence of people right down in the front. So for people who are sort of standing at the back, please do come and sort of sit down the front as well. Um, I think one of the worries that people have when they sit down the front is that I'm going to pick on them, especially when you're talking about a subject called networking as well. It sort of like lends itself to being like a contact sport a bit, doesn't it, really? So just to reassure everybody um, that I won't pick on anybody in the front, I won't pick on anybody in the middle or at the back. What I'm going to do is pick on all of you all at the same time. So don't think for one second that because of the formality of the seats, which are very nice too, by the way, if you look to the back of the seats, they're fantastic, aren't they? Really smart. 
But anyway, so um, what I'm going to do is going to create some chaos uh, shortly, um, just to make sure that we start mixing things up and get a bit of energy going and uh, start doing this thing called networking as well. So be prepared to knock your chairs over, get rid of your glasses, and stick out your hand and sort of say hello to a few people. Um, sometimes I am asked the, the question that sort of says, why the magic of networking? Um, and uh, just to sort of say that back in, I think it was 2001, I had the privilege of actually working with the London Chamber of Commerce for a while, which was a uh, huge fun, I have to sort of say, thoroughly enjoyed myself. And uh, at that point, I was also dating a magician. Uh, <laughs> the rest becomes a little bit predictable, really. One of the reasons I joined the London Chamber of Commerce is that I was fascinated, absolutely fascinated, by this thing called networking. Um, and I was very lucky where, because I was working at the Chambers, I actually got to meet a lot of businesses. And through that, the whole idea is to actually find out what their needs are, why do they want to network, why do they want to join, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then eventually, I started to really work out how did networking really work. Why were some people good and why were some people bad or just didn't get the results? And one day someone said to me, would I like to do a session on network? And I said, yeah, I'd be absolutely delighted to. And my boyfriend was doing a session on magic and he sort of suggested I did something on networking. And I thought, you know, that's a lovely title actually. So as we were driving back from Leeds that day, after causing absolute chaos at this place that we went to, um, I would say, right, that's the name of the company, The Magic of Networking. But sadly, he disappeared and I stayed with it. So, puff <laughs> <laughs> <Off> smoke. <laughs> now, and also, I mean, just to reinforce the, actually, the magic bit as well, is that at the end of tonight, actually what we've got is we've got a little magic trick for you, which is just a huge bundle of fun, um, which I hope you'll play along with as well. In fact, with the size of the audience tonight, this could be my largest yet magic trick all at the same time. So this would be quite good fun. Okay, right, what I want to do is um, explain to you why I got into networking and then actually start looking at what is this thing called networking? Now, I've only got a short amount of time, so I'm going to be finishing about quarter past seven, so you get plenty of time to go and play with this material. One of my problems is tonight is that you're, you're from such a wide variety of businesses, and your expertise and knowledge and experience of networking is going to be so varied. I really don't want to insult anybody, but at the same time, I want to make absolutely sure that from tonight that you get some really good ideas and tips on one aspect of networking, and that is actually when you're coming to an event, how do you make the absolute most of this? Um, so what I thought I'd do is actually sort of play around a little bit. So I'd ask a couple of questions, make sure we're all clear about what is networking, what it's not, and then actually then do a bit of playing. Is that okay with everybody? Marvellous, sort of slow mutter. Yeah. <laughs> no mutter going, oh my God, what's she going to do? I think it's the playing around bit. Like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. It's the playing around bit, that's so much fun. Okay, what I want to do first of all is just make sure the foundations are absolutely rock solid when it comes to what is networking. So, um, as you can imagine, I quite like asking questions actually. So, does anyone want to volunteer? What, does, what do they think networking is? Anyone feeling brave tonight? Speak in front of an audience? Yeah. Come on, talk meeting to me. Meeting new people. Meeting new people. Absolutely. Meeting new people is one aspect of networking. What else is it? Word of mouth. Word of mouth marketing. Absolutely. What else is it? Getting contacts. Getting contacts. Absolutely. That works for me. That works. What was that one? It's cheap. It's cheap. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, networking is cheap. Without a shadow of a doubt. Anything else? What it is? Sharing ideas. Sharing ideas. Absolutely. One of the most amazing things about networking, and the reason why I think I end up calling it the magic of networking, is because you just don't know what you're going to discover when you go out and you stick out your hand and you go and meet complete strangers and you start asking questions like, who are you and what do you do? Like I found out about London Mice already tonight. What a fantastic name, isn't it? Absolutely great. So for me, networking is quite magical. Is that I don't know what, what it's going to show up. Um, but the fact is that I show up, therefore the, you know, it can start. So networking is and should be part of your marketing mix. What can happen quite a lot is that people sort of think, this is my job, this is what I do for a living, whatever you do for a living. And then what I do every now and then is I do this thing called networking, which is this bit over here. So I might go to a couple of events and do a few things, but whatever. Some of you are a bit more sophisticated, which is great, which is actually where you're doing some teas and coffees and golf and do all that sort of stuff. And sort of like, so it goes on. What I find is, is that networking is more of a mindset. It's that in every, I don't know, opportunity, everyone I sort of like meet, or every time I sort of send out an email, or every time I'm engaged with somebody, 
for me, my mind is on full alert all the time, sort of thinking, where is the opportunity going to create itself? So I don't see it as just coming to an event. What I see is, in every engagement, there's a little window. And if I ask a couple of questions, and so I tease it to one way and tease it to another way, something else comes out. So for me, and those of you in the room who are quite natural at networking, is looking for little opportunities and windows all the time. <coughs> now, you see, I can start telling immediately who's my natural networkers, those who've really got it, because they shake their heads. That's it, no, yeah, I agree with that. Absolutely. And then everyone else who don't shake their heads, I'm like, yeah, no, they haven't got it yet. <laughs> all right, so thank you for nodding your heads, because it gives me, you know, confirmation I'm saying the right things. All right, so now what I'm looking for tonight, you see, when you come to an event, is some of you have just turned up because it's a fantastic venue and I'll go and explore. Other people are here because you've got the invitations and you're sort of thinking, well, I'll try that out for the first time. All right? And some of you are pretty experienced networkers, you know, and you just like work the room really hard and all that sort of stuff. So the most important thing is actually making sure that you've got a clear strategy as to how you're going to use your time effectively. So that when you're here, let's get something out of it. So what I want to do is ask a couple of questions. What are the biggest challenges people face when they come into a room full of strangers and you sort of think, right, okay, I know I've got to do this thing called circulate, move around a little bit, sort of like stick out my hand, sort of say hello a little bit. So what are the sort of challenges that you face? What is it that worries you or puts you off from doing this thing called work in a room? Horrible expression. Breaking the ice. Breaking the ice. Absolutely. So what I'm going to do, I'll write a couple of things down. <coughs> Okay, what else worries people? Who are you likely to have something in common with? Oh, sorry, I'll come back to you in a sec. Say that one again. Who, who are you likely to Who's going to be a decent contact? Who's, I mean, who's just not going to be even. You know, if, if you're a pest, if you're, if you're a pest control. Then, uh... <coughs> now, there's a chap down in front, those at the back, in a blue jacket. <laughs> Some of you might be worried when you meet him later on because if he stays with you for just a couple of minutes, you've realised you're not it. <laughs> if he stays with you for a little while, you just like go, oh, yeah, this is the one. Okay. But no, but I think it's a fair comment though to sort of say, how do you find the right types of contacts? Well, if you take it, you're all from so many different types of businesses. How do you know who the right contact is? So we've given you a small clue tonight. You know on your badges you've got some, uh, a coloured dot? Well, some of you have noticed. <laughs> okay, now if I get the coding right, I think if it's you, if you're a if you're a green dot, I think you're an SME, and if you're a yellow dot, you're from a larger company, a larger corporation. So that's actually clear. There we go. Now that might be right or wrong. I'm not too sure, but that's what the, that's what those coloured dots are there about. So. One of the things is, you see, normally when you go to an event, is that there's no real indications as such to sort of say who's the right contact or not. So I think it is a very fair question, who is the right contact? Which then probably leads into, is how do you leave without insulting? <laughs> so we might practice that tonight. Okay. <laughs> Any other thoughts as to what else worries you when you go to, when you're, when you're at a room full of events? What else, you know, you sort of think, oh, I hate doing that, or how do I do that? How do I make sure I'm not trying to sound like I'm selling something immediately? Okay, absolutely. So, okay, so selling versus relationships, or how do you actually steer a conversation in a certain way, get the nugget, and then choose whether or not you move on or not? Absolutely, makes sense to me. Anything else? Avoiding overload. Avoiding overload, what does that mean? Well, too, too many deals that are sort of a bit relevant at the end of the evening. And too many deals? Yeah. <laughs> Who would like too many deals tonight? <laughs> I like you. <laughs> Fantastic. Sorry, there were other hands up over here. Who put their hand up? No, I was agreeing with him. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, wants to do it. But was there a question? Someone I wanted a question over the back there, which I didn't hear. Yeah, was it you? I was just thinking what daunts me when I come to uh, something like this is that these people out of my league, how can I approach them? Yeah, absolutely. So how do you sort of break into a group? And then also, so there's something about sussing out whether or not, uh, is it going to be receptive? Yeah? Okay, now I'm just putting these up, not so that you can read them, but it's just to remind me the sort of things that we want to cover and everything. Any other particular burning issues? Remembering 
remembering all the names and details you've heard. Absolutely, remember names. Yeah, remembering names and actually remembering some details. Okay, very quick tip. Um, you're all wearing badges tonight, aren't you? I reckon probably 75% of you have got your badges in the wrong place. This is a very quick and easy tip. Your badges should always be top of your jackets. Preferably top right. Not, now see most men, irrespective of whether or not they've got on a, a you know, whether it's a pin or not, is that they stick them over their um, jacket pocket. And there's a problem. See, let there you go, move it. Go on, move up, up, up. <laughs> That's it. Now, I want you all to put your badges up high. Okay, calm down. There was only a little tip. <laughs> it's true, fella. <laughs> okay. Oh, excellent. That's even better. Now, Richie, I think we're going to do a double act tonight. <laughs> okay, now the reason for the, the, the badges being at the top, then, I mean, actually, I'm not worried if it's top, left, or right, to be honest, but as long as it's at the top, because coming back to your point about names and everything, is that when you're in a busy room like this tonight, is that quite often when you say your name, a lot of people sort of mumble their name, or um, someone's not listening properly, therefore they don't, list, they don't actually catch the name properly. Or if you've got an unusual name too, sometimes people start to sort of like worry about whether or not do they hear it right. So what we're trying to do is give them an immediate piece of help, which is to have the badge where it's visible, so people can actually read it quite easily. Now, if you're really tall by chance, anyone really tall in the room, is have it, you can have it a little bit lower down. Because <laughs> the problem is people like going... <laughs> and what's really interesting is as you go around meeting people tonight, I can almost guarantee you, when you sort of like stick out your hands and say, hi, my name's Heather, um, and they check your name badge. That's the next thing they do. They, they go, oh, I'm not too sure about this. So they do, you stick out your hand and you do this, and you go, hello, nice to meet you. And what's your name? Uh, Tullison. Tullison. Yep. And I can guarantee they're going to go, really? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you meet people called Andrew. Yeah. On their badge, and they call themselves Andy, and I go, no, you're telling lies. <laughs> so if you've got your badge up around here, it's just easy for people to see it. Okay, now, Richie, I'm going to ask you to do a little bit of If you've got your badge up around here, it's just easier for people to help you. So coming back to your point straight away, how do I remember names when, I first, when I'm first actually introduced to somebody? It's ever so easy. Now, the question is, though, is will you actually pay attention? The reason why you forget is because you're not paying attention in the first place. When I met my then ex, my, like this, this bloke, this magic bloke, fantastic. <laughs> one of the things he did, one of the reasons why he won me over was because he gave me 100% of his attention. So when I first met him, he's like, he was sitting opposite me and he just made fantastic eye contact and he gave me 100% of his attention. How many people do you meet that does that? That focus isn't just in on you. Even if you're actually in a group of people, but they just focus in on you and they listen intently to what you're, what you're saying. They hang on every word. How many people do you meet like that? <laughs> it's not very often, is it? So when I then sort of like, you know, I sort of say, hi, my name's Heather, right? And you're, and you're immediately going, what's my next question? Or did I, you know, did I finish that document? Or I must do that tomorrow. So your brain is going somewhere else. You're not <laughs> focusing on the person in the first place. So, the first thing to do when you meet someone is listen intently to what they're sort of saying. And if you're not too sure, I mean, I'm quite visual, so if I'm not too sure, I'll double check it with a name tag quite quickly. Because actually I'm dyslexic as well, so therefore I need to have different types of reinforcers on names. I, not, I just can't hear it, I need to sort of like double check things out. So, the whole idea is focus, listen, and of course this next one is, which is terribly easy, but something people don't practice, is use the name within the conversation. Now, there's nothing new here at all, is there? No? Common sense? Common practice? Probably not. So what I'm saying is that in order to come to your question, the best way of doing that is focus, listen, repeat the name, and if you need to, do a quick visual. What I also do as well, though, if I really can't get the name stuck in my head, for whatever reason, is I ask for a business card, and then I can quickly read it, and then say, okay, got it, got it. If I get a really unusual name, then I might actually have a discussion about the name itself. Because actually, do you know, people who've got unusual names, they've got this history. And of course, then you can have a fantastic conversation about stuff, which is great. So if you ask me about my name, it's Heather White, by the way. I was born on Friday the 13th. There you go. That's interesting, isn't it? You won't forget now, will you? There you go. Right, okay, fine. <laughs> You've been sitting down far too long. Let's have a go for our first interactive session. Okay, warm up. Warm up. Absolutely. Right, glasses underneath the chairs. Glasses away, bags underneath the chairs. 
I'm not too sure if I covered for insurance on health and uh, safety and all that sort of stuff. Okie dokie. Right. <coughs> Alan, you ready to play? Yeah, you're fantastic. Okay, one of the things that happens when we walk into a room full of strangers or potential strangers is that personally, as I quite like people, I go, oh, great. <laughs> people to play with, all this sort of stuff. I get quite excited. However, I'm like most people, I also get quite nervous as well about walking up to a stranger. So this is what I do, and this is what I'd like you to do. Look around the room, just stay where you are for a moment, just look around the room, and I want you to look for a friendly face. <laughs> the tip is here, all right, is that when I go into a room full of strangers, and it, let's say I know nobody at all, then what I want to do is I want to get comfortable really quick, because, you know, otherwise, you know, it just makes me nervous for the rest of the night. So what I do is I just go and find somebody who I just sort of think, you know, you look interesting, or uh, you look a bit unusual, or I think I can connect with you. <laughs> now, the type of people I tend to go for, by the way, is that, because actually what's quite interesting, when you sort of study this more on a sort of like a psychological level, is like attracts like. And in order to find common ground, bizarrely enough, actually, if you go up to someone you just simply like the look of, I can guarantee you very quickly you'll find something in common. As soon as you find something in common, you can relax and enjoy yourself and chat. It's nothing about hard selling business, coming back to your point. So what I want you to do is that person you just went, do you know, that looks really interesting. He looks cute, eh? She looks nice. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever it was, you went, I think I'd like to come and talk to you. Why don't we stand up and do it? Oh, I know. <laughs> okay, go on, up, 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 up. Go on, stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Go and find that friendly looking person now. Go on, say hello. <laughs> okay, all right then. Now then, how did that go? <laughs> so did you find some stuff in common? Yes. It's actually quite easy, isn't it? So if you like, the, one of the easiest ways of getting comfortable in, in working in a room, so to speak, is to actually just simply get, um, you know, go and talk to people that you just simply like the look of. And there is another exercise I could take you through, but because of time, you're lucky. You're lucky, I don't you're lucky. I want you to do, I'm going to take you through the first part of the second exercise, but it's just to show and illustrate a point. So as you can imagine, the first bit was sort of saying, have a look around and see someone you simply like the look of. You know, for whatever reason, you know, they're interested in or whatever it is. So you can imagine what the opposite one is. <laughs> well, not quite that you don't like so, but the exercise is this you see what will happen is when you're at, a, at an event the chances are you will actually go and talk to someone you, you simply like the look of a lot of people end up stumbling into the next group and then they stumble into the next group and all this sort of thing but what happens is that quite often is that we won't go and talk to somebody who simply is not someone we would normally talk to for whatever reason that is is that we actually will avoid them and sometimes, if we end up going into a group with one of these people that we wouldn't normally talk to, is that quite often we can become quite quiet, more introverted, or feel awkward, or, st or mutter, or stumble, or something like that. So I'd like you just to look around the room for a second, and I'm not going to get you through the exercise. <laughs> oh, so I want you to think about it just for a second. Who is it that you wouldn't normally... <laughs> Calm down. <laughs> Okay, the whole idea is this, you see, is that I want you to be aware that there are people in this room that you wouldn't normally go and talk to, for whatever reason. And when you realise that there are people in the room that you, that you don't normally talk to, actually sometimes that's the missed opportunity in itself, because actually the opposites are also quite interesting. So mine was, and sometimes can still be, 
is tall gentlemen, grey hair in suits, who look very clever or intelligent. <laughs> that would be the person that I wouldn't normally go and talk to. So what I did was, is that part of um, developing my own skills of networking is I realised that there are people I don't talk to. So once I realised I was stopping myself from getting some good results, what I did was I started to look at who wasn't I talking to, and that predominantly for me was white guys, uh, tall, in suits, grey hair. So as an example, people always hate me doing this. And this gentleman here, Bob, you talk to us. Come here, Pete. I like you. <laughs> That's right, actually, great. No, no, it's okay, but I just want to. <laughs> is that actually Bob is a chap who I probably wouldn't have spoken to but what I discovered is actually when I sort of like put myself on the line a little bit took a few risks and then discovered that these two guys with grey hair and suits and everything were gorgeous people just like Bob <laughs> you know sometimes we project you know we put people off okay now for example when I actually do this exercise where I actually get you to go and pick on somebody that you wouldn't normally go and talk to you know a lot of people sort of going I'm not moving on this one I don't <laughs> So I have to persuade them and conjole them and all this sort of stuff. Now what happens is, is that normally, two or three blokes, normally as a rule, will come up and talk to me. And the first time I did this exercise, <laughs> these three guys come up to me and I'm still in sort of speaker mode and I'm sort of thinking about what I'm going to say next and how I'm going to position the next bit. These three people come up and I'm sort of thinking they're going to ask, can you just confirm the exercise? So I think, yes, can I help you? <laughs> and then, no, no, you're the person I wouldn't normally come and talk to. I went, mean, you're kidding me, you know, what me? <laughs> and they went, no, because you're one of these, like, confident women. And I'm like going, God, I can't believe this. Do you know how long it takes to work on your confidence? So that, you know, you sort of like go, okay, I won't turn up a nervous wreck, I won't blush and stammer and have sweaty hands. And I work my socks off at events like this, getting confident over things that I was lacking. And then I become too bloody confident. I mean, how ridiculous is that? <laughs> but I'm putting people off. Now, am I going to change that? Absolutely. I, it's, not my, it's not my bloody problem. Like that. <laughs> right? So I'm not, I can't actually change that. But I will take note that when someone is talking to me, if I get a sense of that they're uncomfortable, absolutely. But I'll make sure they feel inclusive, make sure that I care for them and that I nurture that relationship without a shadow of a doubt. Okay? Because it's the nice thing to do. It's the right thing to do. However, there's a point here. There's two questions up here, sort of saying the difference between selling and building relationships and finding the right contacts. If I am not pulling towards me on my just sheer presence, the right contacts, actually I'm doing something wrong. Because if I'm not pulling towards me people who want to sort of you know, look at me and go, do you know, she's the sort of person I want to talk to. And these are people who are decision makers and all that sort of stuff. If I'm not doing that, I'm actually doing something wrong. So actually, I do need to make sure I stay focused actually on what am I projecting and who actually come and talks to me. Just explains why I'm single, I expect, as well. <laughs> <laughs> so who believes networking is not selling? Put your hands up. Okay. And who believes networking is selling? Oh. Yeah, this is actually really important. Let's just make sure we really understand what networking is, because if you get this bit wrong, I can guarantee you how you work the room, in fact, I mean, I'll reframe that. How you work the room depends on your attitude towards networking. For those of you who think networking is selling, your style and approach of networking will be different, to some degree, to those who believe networking <coughs> isn't selling. What's interesting, <clears throat> if you take the, the British culture, is that most people I know hate, loathe people coming up and sort of like doing the sales pitch. For no reason, we've got it into our heads that actually what we want you to do is build a relationship. At the same time, sifting out the right contacts or not in some sort of elegant, sophisticated way that makes us all feel rather nice and jolly. Okay, networking is part of the marketing mix, full stop. Okay, that's where it sits in the scheme of things. 
So what I'm looking for is that there are times when you turn up at an event like this, when there's a window. And the window is, you're the right person at the right time, so therefore give me your pitch, so to speak. However, through observation and listening to the conversation, if the person's going, I don't want to, have, I don't want to hear that, and I don't want to have that conversation, therefore you should not, under any circumstances, make your pitch at all. One thing about networking is that it's the word of mouth stuff. To be honest, what's really going to happen is the chance of you meeting the right person tonight who's ready to buy your products and services tonight or in the next couple of days is actually remote. How many people in this room, as a rule, when they meet someone for the first time, as a rule, can actually do business quite quickly in under a month with that contact? How many? Okay, can I, you can put your hands up. You don't, at least I know it's an important point. How many, put your hands up again. All right. Look around for a second. Do you know how small that percentage is? I know, 1% maybe at the very most. So there's a tiny percentage here tonight that could meet the right person and could sell their products and services quite quickly in less than a month. I've only done it, the fastest I've ever converted a cold contact from meeting at an event like this is three days. Majority of times it is three, six, nine, 12, two years. That's about months and then it goes into years. Okay, so therefore, networking is the tool that enables you to find a contact, to, to establish some sort of rapport, and within that, to actually hear about <coughs> some opportunities. Once you've heard about some sort of opportunity, then that's the time when selling comes in. But it could be that you meet someone two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times before that window actually appears. One of the reasons, excuse me, why networking doesn't work for a lot of people is because they don't understand about the buying cycles and the buying cultures. So I know that with my contacts, that it's going to take maybe up to a year for the right window to open up. However, I want to make sure I'm on the list of whoever they're thinking about when that moment arises. So tonight is about having fun, make, you know, meet some people, enjoy that experience, because I know if I do a good job there and just build in this bit of the rapport, it's who you know, and there's nothing new here at all, it's who you know that issue you might go and talk to people about. Because at the moment, there's not a window. But if you know 200 people, three, four, 500 people, and they're having a chat, it's the word of mouth that's going to sell your products and services. It is not unlikely to be tonight. So in my mind, networking isn't about selling, about finding the opportunity that could lead to a sale. However, as a marketing tool, if you get your strategy right in the first place, you can up your um, um, percentages, if you like. So when you're looking at the event you want to go to, the first thing I'm always looking for, is this the right event I should be going for? What's my reason for being here? So for those of you who come tonight, how many of you actually are looking for winning new business tonight? <laughs> okay. So what other reasons are you here? Why else did you come? Come see me. Oh, I knew that is. Bob, he's the man. Okay. I came to see Liam. Liam, where's Liam? There's Liam. <laughs> Introduction, fantastic. So what I want to do is actually, um, because I'm running out of time, what I want to do is actually take you through just a couple of very quick things to fun to do. I need a couple of um, volunteers. I need two tall blokes and two women of any height. Okay, what I, what I want to do is actually show you the differences between sometimes how men and women interact with each other, okay, and also how to get over the height issue, because actually a lot of people, these tall people, these sort of shorter people, actually what to do with those. And then also within this, I'll show you how to break into a group elegantly and also leave nicely as well. Right, can you sort of shake hands and just say hello? I'm so pleased we're so tall and so good. Stay exactly as you are for a second. It was a private conversation. Right, just stay as you are just for a second. Now, one of the most important things about networking is actually when you come into a room for the first time, observation is a key thing. And I'm looking for it, if I'm going to break into a group, what sort of group might I break into? Now, one of the things that's interesting with blokes, and this is not all men, but this is a lot of blokes. Shh. 
Will you, will you be calm? We're networking. <laughs> we'll do that afterwards. Right. What normally happens with a lot of bloke, not all men, is that when, they're, when it's just two of them, this is often how they will stand, where they're at an angle. All right. There are some blokes who will actually sort of stand more face to face, but most guys, when they don't know each other, they tend to stand at this angle. It's much more open. Okay. Now, what's interesting is that this is exactly the sort of, if it's two people, the sort of group I would break into. Because actually, there is a lot of space, and I could just sort of like slip in here and have a good old chat. Free, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> but it is interesting looking at the difference between how men normally stand with each other versus how women normally stand with each other. So, can you two sort of shake hands and sort of say hello? Nice and look at the difference, <laughs> the immediate difference. Look at the proximity. Look at actually how they face on to each other. Right, so now what I've got is I've got two extremes. I've got chaps, a lot of chaps will stand like this, and a lot of women will stand like this. We have a problem. Because guys, when they read that type of signal, often can go, wee, something heavy going down there, won't go into that one. And actually might not go and approach a group of women or two women, because they sort of think, do you know, there's something quite heavy going on there. Now for women, it's a slightly different thing. If I come and join this group over here, my, my, uh, <laughs> stop smiling, you. <laughs> this is my mate, you see, and I didn't expect him to stand up until like doing part of the demonstration. So what would normally happen is, is that when I join a group, instinctively as a woman, is that my preference would be to sort of stand quite close. Now, I've got two problems. One is, is that actually these two chaps are rather on the tall side. But if I stand too close, I'm forcing them to look down at me, almost like down their noses at me. If you go back to my fear, which is tall boats in suits. This is intimidating. Okay. Now, the second thing is as well, and I've seen this happen a lot, is that when women come in too close, if the guys aren't comfortable with this, you start seeing them backing away. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, a really quick story, really, really quick story. Right? I, was doing this, I was doing this with a, with a group, and, uh, and I explained this, and I sort of said, right, go off and play and experiment, and all this sort of stuff. And there's this gorgeous, I mean, she was gorgeous woman, absolutely stunning. And this bloke, five minutes later, come running in, he's sort of like going, Heather, 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 he's going, get this woman away from me. I'm like, oh, what's the problem? So it turns out, so if you know the two guys at the back of the room, you know, standing up against the wall. Well, this bloke was standing up against the wall. Sorry, guys. This, woman, this bloke was standing against the wall, and this gorgeous woman comes up and starts talking to him. And when she's doing everything I said not to, so she's coming up, you know, like really close and everything. The guy can't back away because he's up against the wall. <laughs> and, I, and I said to him, I said, what's your problem? I said, she is lovely. And he's like going, do you know what she does? I'm going, no, I don't know. She works for a sperm bank. <laughs> <laughs> that was so lovely. <laughs> he couldn't get away. I was just staring. <laughs> so anyway. <laughs> yeah, and he complained absolutely. I, could, I didn't get it myself. So anyway, so very quickly. So the, the tip is this. If you are, as a woman, if you're coming into a group and you've got these tall guys, Right, so if I come in and sort of shake hands and do that sort of stuff, just take one step back, mm. all right, so that actually I can now enjoy a conversation this way and I'm not forcing you to look down at me. And with sort of chaps, if you are talking to people who are shorter than you, then actually I need you almost like to soften your body language a little bit just to make it easier for this <coughs> conversation. The other thing that can happen as well when you've got two people who are talking up here is that sometimes when you're shorter you can feel just a tad left out. So again, I'm looking for the willingness to want to engage with me where... We then start talking down, absolutely, you know, sort of like bringing me into that conversation. Likewise, come back to my two lovely women over here, yeah. is that it's absolutely fine, even when you see women sort of like in this type of position, it's absolutely fine to break in. Because <laughs> women often do this thing which some chaps don't do, and I start to insult people, so I'm sorry, is that women tend to have very good peripheral eyesight. So when someone starts to move around, they will probably pick me up quite quickly, mm -hmm. and they will do just that. They will turn at an angle and actually bring me in, all right? And then we'll start a conversation. I'll show you the difference. If you two guys, you know, have a heavy conversation now. <laughs> so when you get two chaps who are... We're not moving. <laughs> when you get two chaps who are in a much more closer proximity, okay, what can happen is when someone comes and joins them, Sometimes I've seen chaps who actually keep the conversation up there and actually doesn't bring me in just like this. <laughs> okay, it's not that rude, very good at acting. Isn't it? <laughs> so what I'm saying is, is that what you're looking for is that your behaviour will make the difference between whether or not will the experience for the other person be nice. And I'm looking for 
What are they going to say about me when I'm... <laughs> Shush! <laughs> I know, he's a chatterbox, isn't he? So it's what people are going to say about you when you've gone. So if I actually interrupt, you know, the women, and if I sort of blow it, I then end up sort of like standing slightly to one side, and because of my height, I'm starting to look over your head, over your shoulder, which is why, <laughs> which is what a lot of chaps can do, is that, you know, when, if a bloke's not into eye contact, or anyone's not into eye contact, what can happen is, is that the other people are, they can feel that you're not listening, that you're not paying attention, that you're not being respectful. So what I'm looking for is, you know, you've all heard of mirroring, Okay, where you actually mirror someone else's body language. Well, I don't want to go quite as far as that, but I do want to show respect. So if someone I'm talking to is into more eye contact and a closer proximity, I need to feel comfortable with that. Likewise, if I'm joining a group where it's much more open, I've learned to stand more at an angle. And if they're not making eye contact a lot with me, I've also taught myself to actually still somehow (laughs) enjoy a conversation looking around, but actually talking to people. I don't quite know how some people do that, but you know, but I've learned to do that because what I used to do is almost make people cry because I like eye contact, and I'd be following them around and they'd be running around, off, you know, chasing them, backing off, and also they'd be going, she's a bit aggressive because she's done all this eye contact stuff. So it's all about appropriateness with the person that you're with. Thank you, chaps, and thank you, ladies. That's very good. Thank you very much. <laughs> Okay, so just to quickly wrap this up, in order to join a group, the most important thing is to look at what's going on with the group. Actually, I was talking to my friend over here from um, London Mice, it was at Hugh, isn't it? Um, And we were sort of saying, okay, which groups would we go into and which ones wouldn't we go into? And what we were looking for is the sort of either the body language that would sort of say this is a closed group or potentially the intensity of what looked like quite a good conversation. Either of those two is the indication that says do not go in because it actually can be breaking up something quite interesting or useful for the other person. If I see a bit of space and, I, and it looks as though there's nothing really heavy going on, then that's the group that actually I tend to go up and sort of say hello to. Wrap that around that they just look like interesting people, they look nice, they look friendly, and actually you've got yourself quite a nice little place to play. And normally within that, because you're relaxed, that normally means that you find quite a lot of common ground. In terms of leaving a group, at an event like this, it is important to circulate. Not run around like a complete idiot, but it's important to actually go and meet some new people. So, you know, look through the list, see who'd like to meet, see if someone can actually do some introductions for you, and actually move around. And it's absolutely fine at the end of a conversation to sort of say, do you know, it's a real pleasure meeting you. I'm going to carry on circulating. I'm going to carry on meeting some people. There is nothing wrong with that at all. Because at this type of event, it's expected for you to move around and sort of say hello and meet some new people. So that's okay to do. So, my time is up. We're going to finish on a quick magic trick. So I'm going to ask my lovely able helpers. Yeah, here they come. What I'd like you to do is when you're given one of these things, do not play with it. At all. So just pass it down the lines, okay, and just hold it in your nice hot sweaty palm with me. And in a minute we're going to do the largest trick I've done so far actually. So this will be interesting to see if this works. I hope there's enough to go around. Yes, you can do it. <coughs> Just for a second. Thank you. Okay, the question I've got down front is actually what would be a good result for, was it how many people to meet, Richard? Okay, I've got a number of views on this one. If, it depends on my reason for being there in the first place. If I've gone to an event because I want to um, practice something, as in some of my soft skills, my influence and skills or something like that, because sometimes I go to an event just to actually go and test my impact on somebody else. Because knowing it's so important, and if I lack confidence in an area, then I actually want to go to an event to work with people that I wouldn't normally, I probably really won't meet again to do that. I might be going to an event because actually I've invited a number of guests and actually I'm there to be with my guests, but that they get a benefit from that. I might have gone to an event because I'm going to meet all the right types of people that I want to do business with. So I'd come back to, what's your strategy in the first place for being at a particular event? Okay, so if I'm looking at this event and you're looking for the business opportunities, what I would consider as being a good result would be, one is that I've connected, um, do not play with the thing in your hand, anybody. There's always one. 
<laughs> Stop putting the delegate. No, I know. <laughs> I can't so, from tonight it would be, have I made contact with the host? Oops. I think making friends with the host is absolutely vital. All the ho- in terms of actually, in this case, we've got a number of bodies. Because your host knows you lot. And because your host knows you, then actually they know how to do introductions and actually make some connections for you. Do not ever work your host in an inappropriate way. So I'm not expecting Colm and Helen and Giles <laughs> to suddenly have 120 people go <laughs> like it was on them. But the idea is to make friends and find out what they do and how they do it and actually look for the connections. If this was a room full of people that I would want to maybe do business with, then for me it's actually um, walking away with probably about three or four decent business cards on the basis of that I've established some sort of rapport with that person so that they would actually take my call the next day. So if, now, what I'm looking for is a conversation that enables me to pick up the phone and have a chat with them, but it may not be about business. When I meet somebody, I have a mindset that says, this person, if they're the right contact, will be in my life for the next five, maybe ten years. If you're looking at how long you're in it, for those of you running your own business, okay, you want a nice pool of contacts that's going to sustain you for the rest of your, your business life, don't you? So I'm not in a rush. If you're the right contact, hey, we've got, we, we got a long time to get, to get to know each other. So I don't have to rush the engagement. What I'm looking for is will you have coffee with me afterwards? Well, not in particular. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what I'm looking for. Six, <laughs> what I'm looking for, my success for me would be whether or not, would you have a cup of coffee? If you sort of say, yes, you'll have a cup of coffee with me, then I've done a good job. Because networking isn't about tonight. It's about the day after, the day after, the day after. And so when I spend my life doing it, it's not coming to events, when I spend my life having teas, coffees, and dinners, and lunches, and all this sort of stuff, I have a way of time. Hence the reason for a nice round belly. You see, but that's success. Will you take my call in the morning? Okay? Marvellous, right. As in life, try to attach a bit of philosophy to this bit of magic trick. As in life, sometimes we're handed things on a plate. <laughs> okay, but what happens is that sometimes you can handle this thing on a plate, but if you take no action, it just remains something in your hand. <laughs> this worries me when I come up with this stuff. So what I'd like you to do is... Is there a spare one or is it all gone? They're all gone. Okay. Put it in there. Okay, we should go. So put that silver thing between your on your left hand, between your finger and thumb, and hold it up first. Okay? No, that way. That way. Sorry? <laughs> okay. Now then, with your other finger, with your other hand, you take off the ring, but don't lose it, and don't let go. Put the ring somewhere, don't let go, don't let go. Put the ring somewhere safe, because you want it back, I promise you. Okay, ring safe. On a count of three, I'd like you to throw the silver thing in the air and catch it. One, two, three. <laughs> And of course, for some of you who are big kids in this room, hopefully most of you, you want to do that again, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> so all you do is just flatten it out, and then just wrap it back round, and then roll it back up. Which is why you need to keep the ring. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you've been it's huge fun. Thank you ever so much. I hope you got something. I'm around to eight o'clock. We're going in particular questions. Have a good time. Thank you. <laughs> While you're playing with your wands, can I just say a few words? There's obviously food and, uh, and some wine and soft drinks in the next room, so I hope you take the opportunity to spend the next hour practicing some of the skills that we've learnt <laughs> so well this evening. But before we do that, obviously, can we say, say great thanks to Heather in the usual manner? Yeah. <laughs>